On this episode, we fanboy hard enough to make your mama blush. Welcome to Save Every Universe. Uh, my name is Alec Garcia, one of your co-hosts. I am a plastic military soldier who fights against the tans and blues. I avoid flamethrowers like the Dickens. And my name is Robbie. I'm a mysterious bounty hunter and futuristic racer, racer who thwarts the plans of the Black Shadow on and off the racing circuit. Nice. Who were you last week? Uh, last week I was Bill Clinton from, uh, <laughs> from NBA from Jam. NBA Jam. Right? Yeah. <laughs> that was one of the few ones because, like, usually we're, we like just get in the zone of recording that uh-huh. I'm like, but that one I immediately knew what it was. Most of the time, I kind of am just like in the zone or whatever, and I don't really listen to what you're saying. But that one, yeah. I was like, oh, that's such a good one, dude. The announcer from NBA Jam, yeah. boom shakalaka, yeah. is it the shoes? <laughs> yeah, he's on fire. Those are the best. That is a, yeah. That was yeah. a really good one. Uh-huh. Uh, and last time I was Samus from Metroid. I yeah. tried to make that intentionally misleading and sound it a little bit sounded like, like Master, Master Chief. Chief. Yeah. yeah. Similar characters, actually, if you kind of think about it. Oh. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. Uh, today we are talking about the Destiny 2 open beta. Uh, we wanted to give our some of our first impressions, but we also wanted to sort of piggyback on our previous episode where we mm-hmm. talked about open betas and how those kind of function in the video game industry. They are treated they they are treated like demos nowadays. Right. Um, and so sort of what is the purpose of this Destiny 2 beta? Um, what were our first impressions on it? What do you have on the docket today, Robbie? You know, uh, we, so far, we've talked about, like, big idea stuff, so I thought this would be, like, a really cool opportunity to not just look at it in a vacuum, to, like, immediately apply what we talked about. Right, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, we should talk about the beta a little bit, but also it would be cool to see, like, our th- how we apply what we talked about in the last episode yeah. to something that's happening right now. Yeah, and as, like, as I was playing through the destiny 2 beta because if you haven't played it yet if you didn't get early access or you're not planning on playing it or whatever you um you it opens with a story mission like the opening story mission and Mm -hmm. then you get access to one of the strikes and then you get two crucible um yeah game types and as i was playing through it i thought about our episode our last episode where part like it really was it felt 50 50 to me like half of it was um a demo for the people who had like bailed and it was like here's a little sampler of Uh like winning people back and stuff and i actually talked to uh chris McHale from a previous episode and he was like yeah i've I've talked to a bunch of people and they have played the early access and they say it's good i'm probably going to get it it looks really good Uh so i think it 50% 50% was like sort of designed to win people back with better story, with better characters, um, that kind of stuff. The, the, we can get into this a little bit later, but the strikes in uh-huh. the, the strike that you have access to was leaps and bounds better in terms of level design, I thought. Yeah. Um, but then the other half really felt like just access to an open competitive multiplayer in terms like they probably really are balancing things there. Yeah, maybe, you know, actually I, the more I thought about it, cause I played it, I tried to play through all three classes and do, all three activities on all three classes yeah. before before this episode so that I could like really get a round yeah head, get a, a view get around of it, it and, and I'm gonna go out I'm gonna disagree with you a little bit I think it's 80 to 90 percent demo yeah just to like drum up hype yeah and yeah. very little bit beta, beta so yeah. if you want I can I can start into that yeah so, go ahead all right so we talked about on the last episode about how a beta is supposed to be like a testing software a test it's this. supposed to be a feedback system for the developers not mm-hmm. so much a demo for the player right and i mentioned on the last episode that when i did the beta for star wars there was a whole feedback system right i haven't found a single feedback there system. is no feedback there's system. no feedback yeah so one right off the bat they don't want to hear from me right well <laughs> okay so i i did think about this too after our after our last episode i and i some because some of the betas we talked about Eh, some of them weren't too far in the past, I guess, but like some of the betas that you had referenced, I think some of it is is that so much of it is in the social channels now too. True, they, they might not need those internal native uh, feedback mechanisms as That's much true. because I'm sure they're monitoring there YouTube comments and uh, yeah. YouTube reviews and s- Facebook chatter, et cetera, et cetera. Twitter, That's true. Twitter chatter, all that. Um, and I don't think there was like an NDA, the non disclosure thing. Did you see anything about that? Like, don't put no, this online no, no. or anything. And so, they, well, that might have happened though in the. I don't know if they did a closed beta and it was like so closed, like no one really heard about it or I'd, something like I'd probably that. Probably like be the alpha or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I bet they did something like that for that. But mm-hmm. so they do. You're right. They clearly want like want you to put stuff up. Right. But also that adds fire too. I think they want you to promote this. Yeah. You know, I think they want they're using the zealots, yeah, like us, like us, yeah, fair <laughs> to make podcasts. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? But and YouTube videos, to like, and whatever, yeah, yeah, to promote it and get everyone like excited about it, right? But so another reason why I don't think it's a true beta. It's it's all locked down 
only to the areas that are polished. Right. I don't know if you've noticed, but like, so of the classes that are available. Because e- even on the, the Destiny 1 beta, like you at least could see the map and then like uh-huh. it was the zones were locked, but you saw basically what the game would be. And right. this is completely different. It's locked down. It, yeah, that's a good point. It's actually. like they've it only is, shown you... They gave you a little slice like a uh-huh. demo and said, here, try this out. That's right. They've yeah. only given you yeah. exactly what they know works is kind of what it feels like. Right. So... Right. You know, the Hunters, the Warlocks, the Titans, they have two of their three classes available. Right. Not all three. Right. Why not? Well, they, I mean, they, they might do the same, they might be planning the same thing, like, with Destiny 1, where you it released with two subclasses, and then they added the third as a DLC. No, they've already said that all the... Oh, interesting. Yeah, all three are in it. Yeah, okay. Interesting. So I think it's just, they're still tweaking. Yeah. You know, like, these are, what are the ones they showed at E3? The ones that are available in the beta. Right. So it's all about hype. Right. They want you to try out the new stuff, which is cool, Yeah. but I kind of feel like they're putting their best foot forward yeah. showing off which is fine i'm fine with that right but again it feels more like um like a trial yeah um they've only they've put one strike in which is fine i'm not it's a beta like i'm not saying i'm greedy for content right i'm just saying it really feels like the things they know that work that's what they put in yeah well and, and like we were talking about last time too it is an open beta like we get early access because we pre-ordered but yeah we did confirm yeah but it is it's opening up to just the masses so, so i i do agree with you that it's it is a, a very demo f- forward type of piece of content right so i feel like um and i'm okay with it but it feels like this is this is the one of the most maybe the most polished beta yeah i've ever played right have you had any errors no yet? It, it felt exactly just no it felt like stepping back yeah. into destiny with all the new fancy upgrades and stuff like that but if, i know they're probably doing some balancing but my i've played quite a bit of crucible in the last couple days or whatever it didn't feel off balance didn't feel that badly yeah. balanced which yeah. make, again makes me think these yeah. are the guns and types and you know they are like they know are pretty good on, yeah and the things that they don't know about yet they haven't put in right that's okay but it's just it feels very controlled yeah it feels very polished yeah, which um, again it's sort of is like what we talked about before like there's nothing wrong with it but there's, there's a, nothing there's, wrong with there's it. something weird about the way developers put things forward and the way they set the expectations of what this thing is they're calling it a beta but calling it a beta. clearly it's it's much more on the demo side have you had any errors yet no uh-uh, it's so freaking smooth. I really love it. <laughs> I've had a couple of networking errors. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. One frustrating one where I was like at the very end of the strike and I was with a mm. couple of knuckleheads that didn't know what they were doing. Yeah. So we wiped twice. Yeah. And we had them at like 2% health. Yeah. And then the server like kicked me off. Okay. See, so I could see that being that they were just stress testing the servers. That's part of it. Like we talked about that being a thing with like Ghost Recon Wildlands. Like it, it didn't feel like super beta y, but they clearly had to like stress test stuff at least. But yeah. it, it's incredibly popular polished we at this at the point of this recording i haven't we haven't done the social i know they said they wanted us to try and crash the social area i don't think you even have access to the social space yet no they're gonna only make it on the weekend for like an hour yeah yeah yeah. short window so we haven't done that yet so i wouldn't be surprised though with the early access open beta right like they get like a wave of like tweaking up server stuff and then they open it up to the the bigger masses and then they'll go another round of that then they'll open up the social spaces so i i don't know i think it, it all is just like tech test at this point because you're right it is so freaking polished yeah i mean yeah i think it's too polished to truly call a beta but yeah we also talked about this in the last episode like this is kind of the way going forward yeah i think it is really smart of them i mean if chris McHale is saying that i know i was shocked that means it's working yeah because i mean he's one of the biggest haters he hated destiny one yeah Yeah. he absolutely did yeah Um, so in in that sense though like they did such a good job of promoting like advertising of the beta and stuff like that and promoting it, it it clearly is a piece of marketing and it clearly is functioning more like a demo even if there is a few beta uh token beta aspects aspects to it yeah. almost yeah and we're we're pushing that train along right now. <laughs> yeah. um, so what did you think? What did you like about it? What were some of the things you liked about it? So what I noticed immediately right away was the the addition of the L3, R3 um, additional power. The abilities. And yeah. I play Warlock, so having the more powerful forward um, the, where you're throwing the fire sword, that yeah. I'm really scared that's going to get nerfed. It's so badass. But like I, it, the time is really short on it's it short. so it, it didn't feel too overpowered but it is freaking awesome but having that and then having the rift the heal rift to where yeah. you can heal your teammates and then you have a little bit more of this offensive side the warlock felt more like a like a real class so that was one of my beefs with uh destiny one was that um it didn't feel you have three classes but they're sort of like three lightly differently flavored yeah. versions of the same thing and the, it didn't feel like three distinct 
classes and right. playing warlock and destiny 2 i felt like it was a very it very much its own thing that could support the team and be badass in its own way yeah. and i felt like all the classes sort of had that a little more that was like immediately one of the things i really liked about it yeah well i think we'll talk more about classes just in general but we talk we'll talk about destiny in the next episode but uh yeah for th- for this i was already impressed with like they actually started feeling distinct yeah titans having a wall that they can put up and defend and like everyone can and use. having that little extra power that you can pop a little more often that's more of a yeah. team support thing than it is just a grenade or a melee or a super mm-hmm. like it, it actually felt i felt more integrated to the team playing through a strike or something like that um yeah having that additional power i thought that was a great addition yeah so i when i played through the other classes i'll say that titan and warlock felt the most different from destiny one i thought the same thing hunter felt exactly the same yeah Which is very so cool. very similar i mean yeah. it's a cool class and i enjoyed playing it they've made some small tweaks that i saw like they made the gunslinger shots there was more of them and you right. could like rapid fire them which was cool yeah but hunter felt the most similar and i'm okay to, with to that destiny one but yeah. like titan and warlock like freaked me out when i first loaded right. them up i was like what's happening yeah. like, i didn't know how anything worked yeah but hunter felt pretty similar pretty, even the arc yeah. strider felt a lot like blade dancer yes i didn't I, yeah. really feel that different which so is i don't okay. know maybe, maybe they'll bust something out with uh the third subclass or something that will be that will be where Hunter kind of sort of jumps into yeah. its own or whatever. I don't know. Yeah, their, Hopefully I- their new R3 ability was kind of a... It wasn't as much of a support based. It was cool. Yeah. The shadow step or evade, depending on which one you use. Yeah. But it wasn't as... Team it, Yeah, it didn't have anything to do with your that team. Kind of thing. Yeah. I'm okay yeah. with that because a Hunter is supposed to be kind of kind like of the a... The lone wolf yeah. powered cannon. Yeah. And I still enjoyed playing a Hunter more than I enjoyed playing Warlock. Yeah. So it wasn't like I missed anything. Right. It just felt comfortable like right. it felt like oh yeah i already know how to do this right right the throwing knife and everything one strange thing though is i've put in enough hours in destiny now i'm used to when my cooldowns like my grenade and everything are the, they were dramatically different. different yeah and like so the grenade like, cooldowns were insane yeah the amount of times i walked in and just waved at people and got my <laughs> shit wrecked <laughs> was kind <laughs> yeah. of embarrassing yeah. you know because like i don't i don't even look anymore i just but know it, when it's it up. is a little bit now offset because the cool i noticed the l3 r3 power the cooldown on that was like it was that was fast it was pretty fast so there's right. sort of an offset with having the three different things you can rotate between but yeah the grenades the slowdowns were the cooldowns were insane yeah and i'm gonna have yeah. to get used to using the new abilities more right because i'm just not used to them so i'd be like oh i should have used a wall yeah. or i should have healed myself as a warlock yeah i mean the heal was great i do it I was forgot so to natural to, to me like oh, really? i immediately picked it up and i immediately loved using it uh, but on top i mean to get some of this other stuff out of the way it is go- like the game is gorgeous like with the rain and the smoke yeah. and the fire like all the uh, environmental effects the sound everything sounds beefier and yeah, more the substantial guns sound great yeah. I mean, they just sound like really bassy. They hit hard. They yeah. feel like you feel badass when you're shooting right. them. Like the kinetic weapons have a little bit more of that impact uh-huh. feel and sound to them. Yeah. Yeah. And it feels like uh, they just respond really, really well. Right. And some, it's, that's a pretty cool thing considering like Destiny 1 had some of the best gunplay. Right. So that. The me- oh, the mechanics were flawless, but like what, yeah, the sound, I mean, it looks sort of lasery and kind of thin in some spots. Yeah. And they, but I mean, it was, still was better than any other shooter out there. Oh, pretty hands much. Down. So t- yeah. for them to, up themselves is pretty cool right it's impressive that they didn't like just rest on their laurels or whatever for being the best you know what i mean Uh, they didn't okay so a little bit back to the other point so they didn't put any of the customization stuff in the beta which is kind of a bummer like the like when you customize your character and all that stuff like no not that like it looks like you can customize your guns a lot some of them like you can even change the elements on right i think right i mean i didn't get to try it out (laughs) probably because i think they're still fixing that that's not part of the polish but i'm super excited to see what that's gonna be Right. I mean that the, the stuff they have in there. You can yeah, change the, all kinds the new of weapon system. Like the SMGs are are a fantastic addition, but the way it's arranged, it, it's no longer the primary, secondary, heavy. The you can so you can go from having a scout rifle in your primary, then switch to an SMG, or have two SMGs, or go assault rifle and yeah. SMG. If you want to stack a type of gun that you really like and want to mm-hmm. run with they don't restrict you on that anymore which i i cannot say enough about i really love that change yeah i think it's really cool i mean i saw that right there at the end of my last session like i got a sidearm as my kinetic yeah like in the, my first spot yeah I was like, oh this is weird to think about the fact that i could go like sidearm and then hand cannon in my right. energy weapon yeah. or whatever like it was just really cool um i think that's something that'll be really uh cutting edge going yeah. forward of like what you're going to use what combos right i really want to get away from like stagnant you got to use galahorn yeah there's use- so yeah it felt much more you could just mix and match and like change your style of play on the fly and yeah it was, yeah it was pretty-
pretty great. And if you can, if you can get to the point where you can like change elements, which some of them you can, right. I saw, yeah, that would be badass. Because mm-hmm. sometimes it was like, oh, I really want to use the Zalo, yeah, but it's solar burn right. or whatever. Yeah. So like, if you want to change it up, you can. And if you don't, if you want to just use that one gun or whatever, I think right. that's really cool that you can just stick to whatever. Yeah. So the other thing that I had mentioned this a little bit earlier too was that I was floored by the the scale of like the level design of the yeah. strike where you're going through into the big like drills, like digging through the earth, like the Destiny one felt the worlds didn't really feel that big. Yeah. Um, and I think that was one of the p- things that people complained about. And what was interesting to me is the levels weren't really that bigger. They were still very linear. You still mm-hmm. just worked your way through the strike, but everything felt like more grand and more open, even though it was just as linear. Yeah. Well, there's the part with the turbine where you actually have to like blow it up and you can get killed by it spinning around. Yeah. That was surprising. It kind of freaked me out. Yeah. And then the, the strike with the drill and those yeah. like drill bits, like grinding the yeah. earth, like it was visceral. When it the screams by and the, yeah, and, and I think like Ghost is even like, no, 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 <laughs> like screaming yeah. and you're thinking it. And yeah. that was really cool. Yeah, it was. Everything felt uh, like it had a bigger, more epic scale, which I loved. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm really excited to see like what they do with like more interactive levels that feel more alive. Yeah. It's not just like a set piece for you to fight bad guys on. Yeah. The level has a lot more hazards. I mean, Destiny 1, it was like a box can blow up behind you when you're not paying attention. Right. And that totally sucked. Yeah, and yeah, that was a, there was actually environment danger throughout the, the strike and stuff. Like yeah, that. but it yeah. also makes me think like if they can do that just for a strike like what are the raids going to be like oh i know the well, and, and with weird. the raids being a little more open and accessible to people and stuff like that mm-hmm. i'm i'm very very excited so final word on the beta and um, uh, it's not a beta and- it's a demo, it's a demo. <laughs> like i really don't think it's a beta i'm sure they're using the numbers for their own but it it feels like a demo yeah like it's so polished it's so canned you can only access the polished perfect areas yeah it's a demo but that being said like it's awesome yeah super excited obviously we're, we're not going to cancel our pre-orders <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know what i mean no it really it did like totally meet my expectations and and then some i'm super excited for it to release yeah and it's a very brilliant marketing strategy yeah we will advertise for them right you know I mean? <laughs> yeah. we're gonna generate all the hype and like tell our friends yeah. and be yeah. a bunch of zealots yeah and they can Convert just sit back and you gotta come back for destiny you 2 back. it's if so you, good you, yeah. you're gonna love it you gotta play <laughs> destiny 2 and then they can just cash in on yeah. it yeah that's what's gonna happen <laughs> Thank you for listening to Save Every Universe. If you enjoyed this episode, please go listen to every other episode.